a while since it's actually been nice enough to sit outside and vlog and talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm sure a lot of y'all have been getting tired of the really terrible webcam. I've been trying to look for a new one, but anyway, let's just pour maple syrup on my chest here and talk about why Yu-Gi-Oh! is so bad, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with much better quality than the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living, beautiful day boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in the past few days. I've had no drive to really talk about or play this game. And then after getting absolutely demolished by Branded the other day on EDO Pro playing our terrible Exodia deck, <sighs> It really sucked the fun out of this. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of this format. I'm really, really tired of it. Did you know that this new Exodia deck actually has a really hard time outing a Keshtir of Fenrir? Yeah, that's uh, that's what it feels like to chew five gum with a terrible Exodia deck. So I know I talked about uh, how we're gonna just dunk on the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, but I actually kind of want to talk about something more that's been on my mind looking back at some of my older videos um, that I still get people replying to each other in comments on, and that's hand traps. Um, I look back at some of the older comments uh, on that video since it's still kind of getting some interaction, and there was one comment in particular that made me realize how a lot of people perceive hand traps is incorrect. Um, for those of you who don't know, or maybe you just never saw it, about a year ago or so now, I made a video actually sitting right here in the seat talking about how hand traps are just baby back bullshit. Okay, I'm almost two minutes in so I can curse. <laughs> um, and how they're just unhealthy for the game. And I think now more than anything in this really toxic garbage format, I don't care what anyone says, it's garbage. This, this format's absolutely garbage. I don't see a lot of people arguing that otherwise, but I've seen some a few people arguing that. Anyway, I, I had to get that on out of my system. But the issue with this format right now is that we're seeing most decks play anywhere from 15 to 18 hand traps and even some Tempai decks trying to push to 19 or 20 hand traps, even with droplets, which is crazy because you would think that droplets doesn't work well, but yet droplets is kind of like your backup plan. It's kind of like an oh shit button. It's like playing skill drain as a one of or even a three of in your deck, just in case you need something like that as like a last resort backup plan, right? And so, what I realize that a lot of people are missing with hand traps is that they do create power creep, but I'm hating on them for a reason that a lot of people are hating on them uh, as, as a different way. So the old comment that I saw, uh, or just this comment, doesn't even have to be an old comment. I don't know what I'm saying right now. Can you tell that I'm tired? <laughs> but this comment I saw on my video, someone had said, my four-year-old deck loses to one ash. No shit. <laughs> like, that's how power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh! works. And I think the reason why a lot of people hate hand traps, especially now more than ever because they're played in such high counts, which is my issue, people don't like the fact that their deck dies to one Ash or one Imperm, one Valor, whatever. The issue with that is that that's called fucking power creep. Like, that's just how the game is. You can't take your deck from four or five years ago and expect to not get crapped on even at locals. The issue that I have had with hand traps now more than ever is because how many are played in any given deck, right? Like I talked about in my Yu-Gi-Oh deck building is dead video where essentially the cards are picked for you. You know, if you're putting together a deck, let's just take Fiendsmith because that, that's gonna be more like a pile deck, I feel. It's a good engine, it's a good sub engine rather. Um, but even if you want to build a 60 card deck, Essentially, 40 of the 20 cards are picked for you. You want to play 20 utility cards. Those are picked for you. Those can be talents. Those can be prosperities. Those can be desires. Those can be whatever. And then you want to play 20 hand traps because you want a decent chance of seeing it. So now those cards have been picked for you too. So essentially, a quarter of your deck is picked for you out of the gate if you want to be at all competitive because you're going to play 15 to 18 hand traps. So now you've got, let's say you go with 15. You now have, what is that, another 25 cards minimum to pick in your deck. Actually, it's more like 22 or even 21 if you want to play three talents and a call by because you just don't like seeing hand traps. Maybe even less cards because maybe you also want to play three cross outs with that. I'm not saying that that's correct. It's just the point is you have all these cards that are essentially auto slots in any deck that you play, whether it's a table 500 deck or a table 800 now because YCS Indianapolis, the, the lowest table was table 800. So now I'm saying table 800 deck. Um, or you're playing just good utility cards that go in anything so you could play a table 800 deck 
you're gonna play the same, let's say 25-ish cards. You could play a tier one deck, you're gonna play the same 25, maybe even 30 cards, depending on how big of a deck count you want, whether it's 45, 50, 60, whatever. That's the issue that I have with hand traps, especially now moving into what is gonna soon be a new format once we get Infinite Forbidden and all that. You know, we have another hand trap entering the fray with Mole Chummy, which is essentially a retrain of Max C. Uh, if you haven't seen the effect, essentially you can shotgun it. Every time the opponent normal or special summons a monster from the hand, you get to draw a card. Then at the end of the turn, you have to send cards from your hand randomly back into your deck plus six equal to the number of cards in the opponent's field. So if they have two cards on their field, uh, they end their turn, two plus six is eight. You've got to send back eight random cards from your hand into your deck, and then you'll obviously draw for turn. So a lot of people don't think that this card is going to pop off and be that good, whereas some other people are saying it is absolutely incredible. Now, you have to put this into consideration, especially with a draw card that is similar to Max C, right? We can now play more like how the OCG plays their decks, where like Tempai's playing 20 to 22 hand traps because they have Max C in their game. We're getting a kind of Max C-ish card, more of a retrain, more of a balance thing than anything else. So now we're probably going to see people play 20 to 22 hand traps because if you hit the Mole Chummy and the opponent decides to take instead of the Max C challenge, now it's going to be the Mole Chummy challenge, and you draw a bunch of cards, you're just going to be hitting more hand traps. And even if your deck can't play a lot of hand traps, you just play a power nine, three shifter, which should be banned, three ash, three imperm. There you go, Sugar Boo Bear. Maybe instead of three more hand traps, you play Talents because Talents is a god card. And people are even calling for Talents and Thrust to be banned. So do you see what I'm getting at here? It's not the fact that these older decks lose to one Ash or one Shifter or whatever because that's just power creep. I'm sorry, your deck is garbage now. Like that's just how it is. Or your deck just isn't good enough to keep up with these other meta decks. But it's the fact that so many are played that yes, because of the fact so many are played, these older decks can't keep up. And then you have these floodgate hand traps like Shifter, where if you see it, it's an auto win. Like that's just the the deal. Like unless you're playing Tempai, depending on your build, Flunder, which it's garbage, but it's a decent meta call, I guess, uh, or like Kashtira, every other deck folds to Shifter. Like, I can't tell you how many times in this format where I would drop a Shifter on Snake Eyes, and maybe they just activate a Temple and put a card in the back row, summon out some little insect Snake Eye monsters, uh, the little bugs, whatever, and they just pass on big beat sticks and hope that that's enough. And so... Shifter needs to be banned for the reason that it's just such a good floodgate card that if you see it, you win. That's not fair. I'm sure some people are going to call that for Ash Blossom as well. But the difference with Ash Blossom is that 99% of decks can play through an Ash, especially if, you know, they open up enough gas. Obviously, you're going to have hands where you brick even with a tier one deck in the current format, not your deck from five, six years ago that's now liquid ass with big old chunks inside. <laughs> even a tier one deck can brick. You open up the only good starter you have in your hand is a bonfire, you play it, the opponent ashes you, you crap all over the venue floor, and you pass, and you hope that you survive the next turn. That happens, right? The issue with that, though, however, is that if these tier one decks do brick, because of them playing 15 to 18 hand traps, they probably got three or four hand traps in their hand, Sugar Boo Bear. So even if they brick, it just becomes a hand trap war. And that's the biggest issue because it just becomes who sees more engine. And Joshua Schmidt talked about this when um, he was going over a Snake Eye Mirror match from like a previous YCS before Indianapolis, right? And it came down to a hand trap war where it was a Snake Eye's Mirror and it was like, you know, Black Witch hand trap, Bonfire hand trap, Snake Eye Ash hand trap. It was just hand trap back and forth just to see who would get more engine at whatever point or you end on a little knight just to get a little bit of advantage and start poking uh with the 1600 little knight until you know you hit another engine card and were able to play through whatever else the opponent had that's not healthy which is why i do think that hand trap should be hit shifter should be banned i think that ash should i think the tcg should pull up a page out of the ocg's book because i think for a while the ocg had ash blossom at two correct me on that if i'm wrong but i'm fairly certain a few years back they put Ash at two to see what would happen. I'm almost starting to lean towards the fact that we put cross out designator to two or to one, like the OCG, how I think like they have cross out at one and then call buys at two. Um, correct me on that if I'm wrong. I think that call buys the better card, but I think having cross out and call by at one while also hitting hand traps to some degree would be really healthy. You know, we saw Cyframe Year Gamma go to one, 
but granted the issue with gamma was that you played the brick of the driver but if you went first and were able to use the gamma that led you into an excel synchro stardust which got you into a baron and now that baron's gone maybe we can see gamma come back to two or three granted it's still a very powerful hand trap because at the very least you're going to go into an excel synchro stardust and then any sort of generic level 10 that you want to do right so that's the issue with Gamma, is that that one hand trap could lead you into so much. I would argue, though, that Ash is kind of the same way in a regard, because it negates so many fucking cards. Like, three different effects, can hit a bunch of stuff, it's pretty much always live. Like, if you don't have the out for it, you just lose. And that is unfortunate for older decks, granted that is how power creep works, but the game is getting so fast. The game is getting so much power creep that just opening ash even with these meta decks is never enough so it it almost feels like do we even hit ash or do we keep pushing the power creep train out the door and keep giving just generic engines to all these decks to where one ash unless you brick is not gonna do anything and i don't really feel like that's the answer because then you're playing let's say 15 to 18 hand traps that you basically have to see three in your opening hand to have any sort of chance of being able to stop the opponent from building a unbreakable board going first. Um, but then if you see them going first, you see too many of them, you're going to lose because now we're just back in the same thing that I was just talking about with your opponent going first. They're going to hand trap you to death and like no one's having fun. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Again, I'm sorry for not uploading. I I'm, I'm just so tired of this format. I want a new ban list so bad and... I'm just sitting out here on my pool deck drinking and just waiting for a new list to drop. But your boy's got a date Saturday night, and uh, maybe we drop a Dark Magician Girl, and we see if uh, our Raging Earth can get with that Dijin Symphonic of Rituals or whatever it's called. I don't know. I'm going to shut up now and go back inside. I'm getting hot. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.